In one occasion, I, uh, I decided to uh, count my blessings. And it was an exercise. And I, and I started to write blessings. And at the beginning, it was easy. You know, my parents, my family, blah, blah, blah. And then, and, but then I get deeper and deeper. And uh, at the conclusion of that exercise, and after four pages of my writing, I came to the conclusion that if you are really paying attention to, uh, to your blessings, they're endless. They really are. Because Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, they love us so much that they have created everything that we have surrounding us for us. So I'm glad that we have this musical number talking about blessings. All right. I'm delighted to be here with you. So smile. It's a good day. It's, it's kind of rainy and gray, but it's a, it's a beautiful day. <clears throat> and um, I'd like to ask you this. Have you ever heard in your mind or in your heart or somehow the magical words, five magical words? Your sins are forgiven you. Have you ever heard those words or that phrase in your life? I have. Not only one time, more than one time. So I'd like to talk today about the doctrine of the, forgive, of the forgiveness. There is this scripture in section 58 of the Doctrine and Covenants, verse 42. Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven, and I, the Lord, remember them no more. It's a short verse. I'd like to ask you, do you think the Lord plays games? Do you think he, um, when he says that he remembers no more, he really means it? Or in reality, what he's saying is, hey, I remember no more, but watch out. I still do. I, I remember who you were. Do you, do you think he plays that game? Well, I, I, I know he has a great sense of humor, but I know he doesn't play games. He does not, especially when it's in regarding to our own uh, forgiveness and in our own sins and when it's about our own uh, imperfections. There's another scripture. This is Isaiah. But remember that when we read prophets, what we're reading is the will of the Lord as well. But Isaiah wrote, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. We believe that this is a doctrine that when he is uh, saying that he will remember no more about our, your, our sins or our, our bad doings, he will really, and he really cleans those through his atonement. So I like to talk a little bit about a process. So imagine you are in the middle of this circle that I'm, that I'm drawing with my finger here. And then you go to the Lord and you ask for forgiveness. And then in the second step, he does forgive you. What you do with this, what you do with this forgiveness is what matters. If you change, we call it repentance. What happened with our faith? and what with our own spirituality goes up or down? Goes up, right? So you ask for forgiveness. 
He gives, he tells you your sins are forgiven, and then you change, and then your faith goes up, and then you are in a newer level of light and knowledge. I'll come back to a little bit to this. So when the Lord is telling you that you have been forgiven, he has changed your condition. You were dirty, now you're clean. And he says, I remember no more. He says, you were red, now you're white. So this is a gift. It's a blessing. It's a miracle, actually. Now, you can tell me, well, Elder Spanos, but I still remember. Well, for some reasons, we have memory. I think it's a, it's, it's a good thing that we remember. But that, can, that coin can have two sides, two, two faces. What you do with your memories of your wrongdoings is what matters. So when he tells you that you're clean, you are justified. It is called the law of justification. When you have no more guilt, when you are clean. That is the law of justification. And it comes through the grace and the mercy of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it, because of our faith in him, he has the power to clean us. But what he has done by that forgiveness is changing your condition. But you are essentially the same person. Your nature yet is not fully changed. What he did through forgiveness is saying, hey, I know, you came to me and you were dirty, now you're clean. You're white again. So what you do from there is what it matters, is when you, as I was saying, you are in a newer level of light, and then you continue life. And then you make a mistake again, right? Have you made the same mistake more than once? <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> okay? And then, and then, and then you go again and ask for forgiveness again. And then he forgives you. And then what you do, if you change, if you repent, and then your faith goes up, or your spirituality goes up, and then you are in a newer level of life, uh, light. Sorry. Let me read a bit uh, uh, the description or the definition of repentance. Repentance, the Greek word of which this is the translation denotes a change of mind, a fresh view about God, about oneself and about the world. So repentance is a blessing. It's when we decide, I cannot continue like this. I need to change. So in this process of repenting, when we understand the law of the forgiveness, it's a continuous process is the process through which we start to go up in levels of light. The scriptures call this process sanctification. Is when you become pure, spotless, holy. It's the process by which we become one with him and is obviously a gift, again, that comes by the grace and the eternal atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's also a decision. A, when we are forgiven, we receive the gift of being clean again. We need to use, remember how did you, how did you feel when you, re, when you heard these words? that you've been forgiven. I'll tell you how I felt, perhaps, is like you felt. I felt clean, happier, energized, with a high energy. I felt love, 
for others, and I had the desire to become a better person. That's, those are the, and perhaps you have filled some other things. So we need to use all those feelings to be brave enough to continue the process of sanctification. <clears throat> I am 56 years old. I'm far away from being old, okay? But one of the good things about age and aging is when you have the, the possibility to see things with the perspective of time. Being 56 allow, allows me to see in, the, in my past and to see decisions with the perspective of time. Now here we are, you are students of the LDS Business College, you are in this age, in this range of age that is critical. It's critical for many things. First of all, because it's the age in which you make decisions that will impact not only the rest of your life on this earth, but it will impact your eternity. For instance, you're deciding what to study. You are deciding to study. You are, decide, you are deciding to get married. You are deciding to have children in this age. So, after all these years in uh, serving in the kingdom and having the uh, advantage before you of being older, I can, I can share with you some of my experiences. I have learned that many, many, many members of the church do not understand forgiveness. I have heard in interviews uh, members that continue, re continue remembering things they've done in the past. They would come and say, when I was a bishop, bishop, I was, I, I still remember the things that I committed 10, 15 years ago. And he's still carrying the weight. And I said, have you ever heard that the Lord has forgiven you? Well, yes, I, I have. So why do you insist? So let me ask you, if you have heard already that the Lord has forgiven you, but you continue having these uh, feelings of, uh, of pain, etc., cetera, and, uh, because of things you've done, who do you think wants you to stay in that mud? Would those feelings would come from heavens? Would the Lord be playing the game that, oh, you did that 10 years ago or 15 years ago or two years ago? Do we really believe his words when he says, I remember no more? Now, that is the gospel we preach. This is what we preach. These are the good news. The good tidings that the angels were singing where the Lord was born, that he was going to atone for us, for our sins. So if you can learn right now <clears throat> this doctrine and apply it, first of all, to yourself, and let the, let the past in the past, and look up to the future, by definition, faith looks towards the future because it's the certainty of the unseen. In the past, we, we can see the past, but we can't see the future. So by definition, faith is looking towards the future. Faith will give you hope, the hope that things will go well, that we can actually change that we can become saints, and that it's a process. It's a decision line upon line, and precept upon precept. I'll read a long, a long uh, scripture from uh, Mosiah 4, so bear with me, and I hope that <coughs> you can go and read it again. It's uh, Mosiah 4, it's King Benjamin speaking, and I'm, I'm reading the verses 11 and 12. And, and bear with my, <clears throat> with my accent, please. And again, I say unto you, 
As I have said before, that as ye have come to the knowledge of the glory of God, or if ye have known of his goodness and have tasted of his love and have received a remission of your sins, which causeth such exceedingly great joy in your souls, even so I would that ye should remember and always retain in remembrance the greatness of God and your own nothingness and his goodness and long suffering towards you and worthy creatures and humble yourselves even in the depths of humility calling on the name of the Lord daily and standing steadfastly in the faith of that which is to come which was spoken by the mouth of the angel and behold I say unto you that if you do this ye shall always rejoice and be filled with the love of God and always retain a remission of your sins. So this is the process. That's why I told you, go back and read it again. Verses 11 and 12 of chapter 4 of Mosiah. So you understand the process of retaining the remissions of sins. This is why we go to church every Sunday. This is why we partake of the sacrament every Sunday. This is why we need to repeat this ordinance for ourselves again and again. It's the only ordinance that we repeat for ourselves again and again. We are baptized only once for ourselves. We go to the temple and are endowed only once for ourselves. We get sealed in the temple only once. But the sacrament, we ought to partake weekly. And the reason is because it's another tool that the Lord is providing us, providing for us, that we can use to retain the remissions of your, of your sins. Remember, the first principles and ordinances of the gospel are faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, repentance, ordinance. That's right. But if you've been baptized, the sacrament. That's how you, uh, how, that's how you, you complete the circle. Faith, repentance, ordinance. That's why we repeat. Well, <clears throat> I can be talking two or three more hours about this topic. Uh, I like to bear my testimony with you, my dear brothers and sisters, that the gospel is the gospel of joy. The church is a it's an association of imperfect human beings, of sinners. That is why we come to church, to become cleaner, to become clean, to become holy and pure. And that is the battle of life. This is why we came to this earth, to prove, to show Heavenly Father, we, we want to be like you. We want to become like you. I know that he lives. I know, I know that what I told and I taught this morning is the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. I haven't said anything of my own reasoning. Is what I read in the scriptures is the doctrine of forgiveness, is the hope, is the blessing, an eternal blessing that we can enjoy daily if we are with a repentant uh, attitude towards life. I leave you my love. May the Lord bless you, my dear brothers and sisters, in all your desires and, and dreams. Dream big. Dream big. He will bless you. Keep studying. Because the Lord will use you in His kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for joining us for devotional here at Enzyme College today. We encourage you to share your thoughts and comments and also to share this link with someone who might benefit from the message. Here at Enzyme College, we believe that God can help us grow both spiritually and professionally. And we offer programs like accounting, social media marketing, medical assisting, and many more. If you would like to learn more about the programs we offer, scan the QR code on the screen or click in the link down below. And make sure to like and subscribe and join us next time for devotional.